Hello everyone, and welcome to my Nexus Princess Kaiveza heroic guide. I'll also cover all of normal, and I'll just go through the abilities and what you need to look out for, any tips and tricks on the boss. Um, essentially, this boss looks great and plays really fun as well. Um, the basics of it are that you get these sort of shadow ads spawn um, from players uh, around the room, and then they do this ability called daggers, or whatever it's called, and they move and every time they move they open up a void a sort of portal um and essentially these portals try and pull you in um and there's a load of other abilities that go on that i'll go through um, but essentially it's trying to survive um the pull in and all the other mechanics um and put these sort of portals into good spots as well um and then there's an intermission that's really fun uh, a bit similar to farak in some ways um well no more like rashok but has blazes in it um but yeah let's have a look so first and foremost the main ability you're going to get is the assassination where you're going to get um portals spawn on players and they're going to have ad spawns so you can see here 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 and here there are portals on players that's going to then spawn basically an ad where they are and then that ad is going to do the boss mechanics that the boss does throughout the fight um, and then they're going to move into different places and yeah you need to keep an eye on where they are and where they're put and your tank is going to have a lot of responsibility on placement here you also need to treat the boss as if it's an ad because the mechanics will come from the boss as well so we have three ads around the back you can see them here here and here we have spawned them from where the players went to and there's also going to be something spawning from where the boss happens okay so what you need to do is for the next ability you need to make sure that you are positioning yourselves in between the portals so these portals are going to suck you in and you know, the more portals there are in one direction, the stronger the pull is going to be in that direction. So your tank always needs to look where the portals have been placed and move the boss accordingly in the room to make sure there's always one opposite from where they are placed. In an ideal world, the DPS will essentially place them all in different locations and the pull will be even. You won't really have to move much. But that's not going to happen, especially not in progress. So your tank should just be on it to maneuver themselves so there's at least one far away and that should salvage anything you need. Okay, so how do these portals move? Well, you see that these ads in the background now, here and here, are casting an ability called Twilight Massacre. They will focus a player. If all of your players are stood in the same place, they will go to that one place. They focus a player, so if there's a clump, they will aim there, they go there, and wherever those ads are spawned, that is where the new portals will spawn. This is why it's important for your tank to look where they've spawned and manoeuvre. You can see here I didn't really get far enough, but there is a bit in the middle that you can stand in and the pull is not too bad. Okay, so the Queen's Bane ability is something that will go on any player that has the ad spawn on them, so the assassinate, and then also any player that is hit by the Twilight Massacre, the, uh, you know, this, this ability you can see on screen. Uh, and that will apply Queen's Bane to you, and Queen's Bane basically does some damage over time, and then when it expires, it lets out some little balls. I'll show you that now. Okay, so you can see here, as soon as these void circles go off, these three players are affected by Queen's Bane. So what's going to happen is it's going to do some damage over time and then when these expire you're going to get some little balls spawn which happens to come at the same time as the portals which is really annoying but yeah you can see here they're about to go off and then you can see them spawn these little balls so you have to dodge that at the same time as making sure you're stood in a good spot for the portal um, and then also maybe you want those players that have queen's bane on them to uh, go stand out somewhere and then maybe portal back in you know you can play about with that but essentially you're going to have to keep an eye on it so if you keep an eye on my unit frames to the left here, you can see that all of those people got Queen's Bane applied to them because they got hit by the ad. So you have to loosely spread in this fight. You can't really all stack. Otherwise, it's just going to get out of control. So just a couple of abilities before we go into the second phase. You can see these are the Nexus daggers. Just dodge them. They just come out from the Phantoms and the boss. And you obviously do not want to get hit by them. So yeah. Thin, void lines, dodge. The tank mechanic is pretty straightforward. You get like a four hit combo done on you you get 100 percent increased damage taken from the void treaders and you, you tank swap and you just make sure that you keep yourself alive uh, through the dot that goes on and then when the other tank gets it you swap back nice and simple the boss at any point in the fight through first phase and second phase will try and execute anyone below 10 percent health so keep yourself topped up try not to get to 10 percent health um and if you do get below 10 percent health use a cooldown okay i know that it's probably going to be using them elsewhere but yeah okay so the intermission it's really, really cool. It looks really cool. And it's basically Rashok and Firak put together with some blazes and some dodges, but no swirlies. So 
you can't really stack on top of each other because of these blazes, so you don't all want to be in one section. Um, it's just a case of survive and move as, as, as small as possible and across your lines as possible. Um, and just try and survive. There will be a dot on you the whole time, so you'll be taking damage throughout this phase as it goes on. Um, and essentially, you want to kind of probably spread around and have healers set up um, in different places and, um, yeah, just survive. Well, the worst noting that when it goes into this intermission for the third time, that's the enrage. It won't come out of the intermission. Um, so essentially, by the third intermission, kill the boss. So after the intermission, it's just rinse and repeat. You just go back into the same flow. However, the boss will spawn more adds, um, which obviously means more mechanics to deal with and more damage. Um, so the quicker the fight's over, the better. Um, I'm not sure whether it's best to hero straight away for more damage or like if it gets a little bit tricky later on. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, it's a really fun fight. I would say the takeaways from this fight are basically make sure that you loosely spread throughout most of it. Maybe you want to give specific positions for people with a healer group there. So sort of you try and bait the adds to go in that specific situation. You've got cover with healers there as well. Um, but I would say that for heroic and normal, at least, as long as your tank is aware and they're moving well and they're moving away from where the, the clump of the adds are, and your players aren't all getting Queensbane on them. It should be a pretty, pretty steady fight and a pretty fun fight. Um, just don't let it snowball and uh, move quickly. And yeah, enjoy the kill. As always, thank you for watching and uh, let me know any feedback. And I'll put our healing cooldowns and any raid plans we use in the video afterwards. Thank you very much.